Hello everyone, uh, today we'll be going over one of the lesser known features of No Limits 2 called the Light Pattern Creator. Now, this function was built into the program with what I believe to be a very specific purpose. However, it's actually one of the more useful features for creating uh, geometries, and I'll go into why that is in a bit, but uh, you'll find this tool under the Advanced tab and Light Pattern Creator. So, uh, as you can tell, it's a lot of information to take in. I'll go through what all of these do to a certain extent. Um, so how this is supposed to be used is you can put in information here to change colors and uh, change a pattern that goes on with a set of lights. And what you can additionally do with this is have these lights be output as a scenery file that you would attach to a roller coaster and that light pattern would be put on the track so you could uh, say do a chasing light set up on a wooden coaster that's what it's supposed to be used for that's not what we're going to use for today though if you look here the information that you'll see is basically the information of what is going to be put out in terms of the lights however if you're not doing anything with lights um, you can kind of disregard that for the most part you do want to take note of that though if you have a scenery file that you're going if you're trying to go for a scenery object and have a repeatable texture which kind of brings us into why this tool is extremely useful you can replace the images of the lights that it comes default loaded with with uh, any uh, any image file that it will accept and you can use that to generate a scenery object that will follow the track through the course of the ride so we're going to do a quick demo of how you would do that so let's say we go in here um, and we choose a just a, just a basic color for now this is going to kind of illustrate how you would easily use the track to make a scenery object so we're just going to choose a solid gray and it'll make more sense in a minute why we're going to do this and we can kind of disregard this for now since we are only creating a uh, we're only con creating a solid o object of one color and one pattern if you were to do a tile type thing you can set additional options for that and there are other videos on YouTube explaining how to do that but for now we're just going to set it to gray and where most of our changes are going to take place is in this category here the scene object this is what what is generated when you go through here and uh, set the sizes so what we're going to do is and unfortunately if you do operate in imperial units you're going to have to get used to meters for a second um, as there's no real way to change this even though I have the entire program in imperial this part is in meters so what we're going to do is we are going to set the width as uh, I think I have this as one meter. Height will be point. Actually, no. We're going to go for something a little bit higher just to illustrate what's going on here. We're going to go for three meters. Height of point two five meters. And an X offset of zero and a Y offset of zero for now just to kind of explain what's going to happen. The last step is to select all of these. Uh, this is the profiles that are being generated when you do generate the object. And if you don't have all of these selected, you'll get a weird uh, effect, kind of like when you go through the station. But once all of those are set, we hit Generate SCL, change this to something meaningful. Um, let's say box for now to make it easy and you can actually save this profile too um, right now I have to make sure I'm not going to save over a previous save so we are going to save it in here as box and we're going to generate alright so now that we have our scenery file generated all we need to do is go to scenery choose and choose our object 
Now, one thing you want to make sure of, uh, which I actually screwed up the first time here, is make sure you have your directories right. Otherwise, your file is going to end up in some of your other coaster project or who knows where. So, now that we have add object selected, and bam. There we go. So, this is what was generated. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much a perfect analog of the track, but we defined the uh, dimensions of it to make a different structure that can be used as a addition to the track or really anything because as you know in No Limits 2 you can build additional coasters and not necessarily have them operate but use them for scenery which uh, is pretty common and with this you actually have some legitimate reasons to do so but anyway as you can tell it's not currently on the track and what's great is that you don't even have to center it the creation of it by use of the coaster means that the reference of this object to the rest of the environment is zero so we hit apply it jumps right to the coaster look at that so what you have is a new means of doing track. So if you want to say use this method to uh, give a wooden coaster planks such as you see a lot of times on GCI where there are planks under the track instead of track or you can see the planks under the track instead of track ties that's a good way of doing that. Um, also it's great for dark rides which is what I'm using it for here. Uh, the pictures that I posted of this is slightly different in that I used two of them side by side and had these tires exposed. And if you get the settings lined up right, um, I used a similar width, but I used two and they were, uh, there was about uh, 0.2 meters between them, which allowed just enough distance for the tires to go between. So you get a really, really good dark ride effect if you go for that. Other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's a pretty simple process, um, and you can do some crazy things with it. And I just encourage you to maybe get some different images, see what you can come up with with a repeatability type uh, process. Um, I'm actually thinking of doing a log flume trough with this, which would pretty much require some sort of texture other than like a other than the solid color that we have here. But this works pretty good for a road surface. Also, if anyone was curious, this is also the same method by which we were able to do the RMC rails. So as you noticed, it was pretty similar to how we set that up. And I believe uh, the Codemaster actually has a tutorial showing the method for creating that, but not specifically how they were created. Kind of like what you can do here. But that's about it. Um, have fun making some crazy track uh, creations, and I will hope to put out more tutorials in the future. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a good day.